When we come across fractions, one of the things that we have to do is to look at them and see if we can put them in a simpler form. In fact, see if we can put them in a form that might be called the lowest terms. So, for instance, if we have a fraction 12 over 36, then what we want is a fraction in its lowest terms. Now, 12 will divide into both 12 and 36. So we can divide 12 into 12, 1, and 12 into 36, 3. And so that reduces to the fraction 1 third. The two fractions are the same. They are equivalent fractions. Now, that's OK with numbers, but we want to be able to do it with similar things, but with algebra. In other words, similar expressions that have got letters in them. And whereas here we looked for a number that was, in fact, a common factor, that's a number that will divide into both the top and the bottom, what we've now got to look for is a common factor that's an expression that will divide into both the top and the bottom. So, instead of talking about it, let's have a look at some examples. So, supposing we've got 3x cubed all over x to the fifth. What we've got to look at is what's the same on the top and on the bottom? Well, we've got a 3 here, but no numbers down here. We've got x's here, and we've got x's here. And what we can see is that we've got x cubed here and x to the fifth here. Now, x cubed times by x squared gives us x to the fifth. So, in effect, we've got a common factor of x cubed on the top and on the bottom. So, let's just write that down so we can see it more clearly. x to the fifth is x cubed times by x squared. And what we can see very clearly here is we've got a common factor of x cubed. So we can divide top and bottom by x cubed. And that leaves us with 3 over x squared. Now, we don't need to do this middle step every time. What we have to be able to do is to see exactly what that common factor is. So let's have a look at some examples. And the examples will increase in terms of their complexity as we move through them, in terms of the difficulty. So, what's common here to both the top and the bottom? Well, on the top we can see we've got x cubed, and on the bottom x squared. And we know that if we multiply x squared by x, it will give us x cubed. So, in effect, we can divide top and bottom by x squared, x squared into x squared goes once, and x squared into x cubed leaves us with x, because x times x squared gives us x cubed. Similarly, y into y goes once, and y into y cubed, well, y times by y squared gives us y cubed, so if we divide in, what we get there is y squared. So on the top, we've got x times by y squared, on the bottom, we've got 1 times by 1, so we don't really need to write the 1 there. And there's our answer. We can also involve numbers in this. So if we have a look, minus 16x squared y squared over 4x cubed y squared. Here, minus 16 and 4. 4 goes into minus 16 minus 4 times. x squared on the top and x cubed underneath. x squared goes into x squared once, and x squared goes into x cubed x times. And here, y squared is the same on both top and bottom. So y squared into y squared goes once, and y squared into y squared once as well. So here we've minus 4 times 1 times 1, minus 4, over 1, 4 went into 4 once, let's remember, 1 times x times 1, that's x. So we have minus 4 over x. Sometimes that common factor may not be obvious. We may have to work to see it. We may have to work so that it stands out over what we've got. So let's have a look at something like this. 
x squared minus 2xy all over x. Well, is there a common factor? The best way to look at this is not so much is there a common factor on top and on bottom, but is there a common factor here? Can we factorise this expression? Well, in each term there is at least an x. There's an x here and an x squared here. So we can take that x out as a common factor. x times by x gives us the x squared. Taking x out of here, we're left with minus 2y. So that x times by minus 2y would give us minus 2xy. And then that's all over x. Now we can cancel the x. We can divide the top, the numerator by x, and the bottom by x. That's x into x goes 1, and x into x goes once. And so what we're left with is 1 times that divided by 1, so we're just left with x minus 2y. Let's have a look at another one. x to the power 6 minus 7x to the 5th plus 4x to the 8th, all over x squared. Now again, what we want to do is look at this top line and see, have we got a common factor? Well, yes we have. It's x to the power 5. Because x to the power 5 is included in x to the power 6 and x to the power 8. So we can take that out as a common factor. x to the power 5 times by x will give us x to the power 6. Minus 7x to the power 5. We've got the x to the power 5 outside, so we want minus 7. Plus x to the power 8. We're taking out x to the power 5th, so that's going to be 4x to the power 3. Close the bracket and all over x squared. And now we can see what we're looking at is, is there something common now between these two? And clearly we can divide x squared by x squared, and we can divide x to the power 5 by x squared. So we'll do that, x into x squared once, x squared into x to the power 5 is x cubed. And so we end up with x cubed times by x minus 7 plus 4x cubed. We don't worry about the dividing by 1. That's not going to change anything. Notice we don't multiply out the brackets. It's better to keep the brackets there. We may want it in that form to work with later. What if we have something like this? No obvious common factor. But this is a quadratic. And so because it's a quadratic expression, there is the possibility of factorising it. If there's the possibility of factorising it, then what we might find is that one of those factors could be x plus 1, in which case we could then divide top and bottom by that common factor. So, Leave the top as it is, and let's concentrate on this bottom. We want to be able to factorise that. That means two brackets, an x in each bracket. That ensures us the x squared. We want to have two as a result of multiplying these two numbers together that go in here and here, so we'll have two and one. And now we need a plus sign to give us the plus 3x. And what we can see is that x plus 1 is a common factor. So I'm going to put the brackets around that one on top to show us we've got a common factor. And x plus 1 into there goes 1, and x plus 1 into there goes 1. And so we're left with 1 over x plus 2. You can have one that is, if you like, the other way up. So let's have a look at that. x minus 11a plus 30. Sorry, 
a squared minus 11a plus 30 over a minus 5. Again, the a minus 5, that's nice, that's okay. Let's keep that together with a bracket. But let's have a look at this. a squared minus 11a plus 30. Can we factorise it? Can we break it down into two factors? We've got a squared, so we'll need an a and an a. We now need two numbers that are going to multiply together to give us 30, but add together to give us minus 11. Well, 6 and 5 seem a good bet for the 30, and if we make a minus 6 and minus 5, that ensures the plus 30, a minus times by a minus, and it also ensures the minus 11a, because we'll have minus 6a and minus 5a there. We've now got a common factor of a minus 5, so we can divide the top by a minus 5 and the bottom by a minus 5. So we end up with just a minus 6, and that's our answer. Now, that's the proper way to do them. Some of you might be tempted, might be tempted, when you see something like this, to forget what it is you're supposed to do. So you might suddenly think, ah, lots of threes. I can get rid of some threes. So let's cancel a three here and a three there. One problem. We said we had to cancel common factors. Three doesn't appear here in this term. There's no factor of three in this term. We cannot do this kind of cancelling. Let me just show you why not if we have a look at a numerical example. Supposing we had, uh, let's say, 5 plus 3 over 3 plus 1. Now, if we do the computation without doing the cancelling, we get 8 over 4, and that's 2. Everybody's happy that that's the case. But if I do what I did here and suddenly go absolutely bananas and cancel the threes, then that's a one there and a one there. So what I seem to have now is 5 plus 1, which is 6, over 1 plus 1, which is 2, gives me 3. And 2 and 3 are not the same. Now, we've agreed that 2 is the correct answer. Where have we gone wrong? We've cancelled these threes, divided by these threes, but three is not a common factor because it doesn't appear in the five and it doesn't appear in the one. So we can't do this over here by the same reasons. What we have to do is look and see if we can factorise what is on the top. 3x squared plus 10x plus 3. Can we factorise it? Well... The x plus 3 is fine. Let's keep it all together in a bracket. Brackets here. 3x squared. We'll need a 3x and an x. We'll also need a 3 and a 1 to make up this number here. And we've got to get 10 out of it, so we'll probably have to have the 3 there to give us 9x across there and a 1 there plus signs because these are all plus signs here. And now we can see we have got this common factor of x plus 3. So we can divide the bottom by x plus 3 and the top by x plus 3. And that will give us 3x plus 1. And that is the correct answer. Sometimes we have to work, again, that little bit harder. So let's take this example. 6x cubed minus 7x squared minus 5x, all over 2x plus 1. That doesn't look to be much hope for us here, but there is a common factor of x in each term. So perhaps if we can take that out as a common factor to begin with, we might find we can factorise what's left. So, taking that x out as a common factor, it's going to give us 6x squared there, minus 7x there, 
and minus 5 there. Close the bracket, and we have still to divide by the 2x plus 1, or so we hope. So now let's have a look at this, because this is now an ordinary quadratic. x, 6x squared. Well, let's have a guess at 3x and 2x. After all, there's 2x down there. What do we need now? We've got minus 5 to deal with. Well, I want, if I can have it, 2x plus 1. So let's just be guided by that for the moment. Let's make that 2x plus 1. Minus 5 is what I need to multiply by the 1 to give me minus 5. Have I got it right? I need to check on that minus 7x. Well, here I've plus 3x, and here I've minus 10x. And that does give me minus 7x, so that's right. And now I need to divide by the 2x plus 1. Let's get it together in a bracket. I can divide top and bottom now by 2x plus 1. Goes into itself once and once there. And the answer is just what I'm left with here, x times 3x minus 5. And again, I leave it in its factorised form not try to multiply it out again, because I may need that form later on. Supposing we take something like this. x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. What now? Doesn't seem to be a common factor in x cubed minus 1. Difficult, but you may know a factorization for x cubed minus 1. It does, in fact, factorize as x minus 1, brackets, x squared plus x plus 1. And so because we know that factorization, we can see straight away, we can simplify by dividing the bottom by x minus 1, and that goes in once, and the top by x minus 1. And so we're just left with the other factor, x squared plus x plus 1.